Okay, so I thought this movie was going to make me dread going into the ocean, but I actually wanted to go into the ocean after I watched this movie. I'm not joking with you guys. I really did. It looked gorgeous, man. That water looked incredible. I don't care if there's a shark in there. I, I want to have fun. I want to swim. Anyway, hey there, guys. What is up? It is Autobot Mike 18 here, back with another movie review. Guys, in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the fourth of four new releases that came out this past weekend, and I know this review is probably not going to be up till like Wednesday, days after all these movies have come out, but I had a lot of movies to catch up on. I had a very busy weekend that I couldn't just go see, drop everything, and see all these movies. But out of all the new releases, Free State of Jones, Independence Day Resurgence, The Neon Demon, and now finally The Shallows, which I am now reviewing in this video, i finally seen all of them and I'm all caught up so I can breathe and relax and yay. So guys, yes, I have finally watched The Shallows, which was a movie I wasn't terribly like dying, I wasn't like one of those like, oh, I'm dying to see this movie. It's one of those like, it. based off the trailer, it looked like one of those low rate B movie suspense thrillers in an ocean with a shark and Blake Lively. And I wasn't just like, yeah, I gotta rush out to go see that. It looked kind of average to a decent, eh, bad movie-ish for me. So I wasn't like, yeah, you know, I was like, eh, I'll go see it. People are saying it's not too bad, so why not? So guys, getting into the premise behind the shallows, it's pretty self-explanatory and simple. A young woman, played by Blake Lively, her name is Nancy in the film, she is on a vacation. She essentially, let's just say, she needs to just get away from her family for a little bit due to personal things going on in her, her past um, that have affected her. So she goes to this uh, beach, uh, this very secluded beach somewhere in Mexico, and she loves surfing. So she goes out on the water one afternoon, gets a couple waves in, and gets attacked by a giant shark. The only thing is she survives the first encounter with the shark. She's somewhat injured, but she is stuck in the middle of the ocean about 200, 250 yards away from the shore on this rock, and she has to essentially survive and wait for help or try to get out of the situation somehow and avoid the shark who is literally just swimming around the area waiting for her to make a dumb mistake. And there you have it, guys. That is The Shallows. Now, as I said early on, a early, little bit earlier on, in the review, there was nothing about this movie, judging based off. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys, I had a my, my throat got dry for a second. There was nothing in this movie that, like, in the trailer, that like grabbed my attention and made me say, <coughs> "Oh wow, I gotta rush out and flock to the theaters to go see that one." You know what I mean? Like, it looks revolutionary. It looks like it's gonna be the one of the best movies of the summer or anything. I was, again, as I said before, I was really expecting a not-so-great movie. I thought that we were going to get a really dumb character. I, th I think this movie completely flew under the radar. Nobody really knew it was coming out. I, the first time I had heard anything about it or seen a trailer for it, it was maybe like three or four weeks ago when I went to a movie and saw the trailer for this movie before another movie. So I had not really known a lot or expected much going into The Shallows, but I can confidently say after having seen the movie, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I actually had quite a bit of fun with this movie, and it is not nowhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's actually pretty entertaining and quite suspenseful. I think it really works. Not only as a thriller, because there definitely are some riveting moments sprinkled throughout the movie, but I think it works a lot more as a survival story, because essentially, and this is something that this one director does very well, and I want to talk about this director and his films in a, in a few minutes, but um, I, I definitely got the feeling of this location being this one confined space, almost getting that claustrophobic feeling, and I think that really worked and added to overall uh, the, the, the thrills of the movie. And um, I think that was something that absolutely worked to this movie. And it became, because judging based off the trailers, I thought this was going to be one of those, like, um, uh, like movies where, yes, we have a main character, she's trying to evade a shark, but we're focusing on some other side characters who are on the mainland or whatever, and they got to come help her. And I thought it was just going to go into a lot of other places other than just Blake Lively and a shark. But the movie is really Blake Lively and a shark. And that's it. That's your entire movie. And that's all I really wanted. I was into this conflict from the minute that the shark 
um, broke free and revealed himself to Blake Lively and immediately made her realize, shit, I need to get out of this somehow. I need to survive. And from that point on, I was totally into the movie and I was totally engaged. I was into her decisions and everything that she, all of the choices she was making to further progress the story and progress her own survival. And I was totally into the movie from there on. Now, the, the man who directed this movie, Jaume Colette Serra, I'm probably saying that wrong, but bear with me here. He directed two other movies along with The Shells, now, now having seen it, that I feel are actually quite underrated and I feel that they not get a bad rap, but they're not talked about a lot and I think this guy has actually done good work on these movies. First movie he directed that I've seen is Orphan, which came out in 2009 uh, with Vera Farmiga and Peter Sarsgaard and I thought that was actually a really great movie with a really good twist at the end of that that I totally didn't see coming. The second movie he directed that I have seen came out in 2014, and I didn't even know that he directed this movie and then worked on The Shallows, but he directed Nonstop, which I actually really enjoyed as well. I feel this is a criminally underrated thriller that worked incredibly well with Liam Neeson and the rest of the cast. I do feel the final 20 minutes is meh, but overall I was really into that movie as well, and I thought that the thrills worked very, very nicely in that movie because it was set in one confined location in a plane. Same can be said for The Shallow, set in one confined location in the water, and that's why the movie worked so well for me as a survival story thriller. And I can definitely see somebody going into this movie saying, it's ridiculous, the shark would not do that, it's, d d no, that I don't buy any of this, and Blake Lively's dead, she's not surviving that long, and no, I don't buy any of it. I can totally see somebody going into this movie and, and saying that, and that's totally fine. I disagree, I absolutely bought her survival story, I bought her decisions, I bought the fact that She's just out there in the middle of nowhere. She does have an injury that can be th can be lethal and is definitely affecting her ability to do other things, essentially. And I totally bought her, and I like the character overall. So let's talk about the positives of The Shallows, because I don't think this is a perfect movie. I'm not saying it's the next Jaws or anything. That's one thing I definitely want to squash, guys. This is not Jaws or a ripoff of Jaws. Because I'm sure that was something that people were saying when they watched the trailer. This is a movie entirely different from Jaws. This is a survival story. Jaws is a straight-up horror-ish horror -ish thriller that is just freaking amazing. And deals with a lot more characters. This is, again, as I said, a lot more contained and a lot smaller. And deals with only one character, Blake Lively. And that is definitely one of the strengths, big strengths, going into this movie. Blake Lively in the lead role. Now, that was something I wasn't concerned of, but I was like, I've never seen Blake Lively in a lead role before. I've seen her in many supporting roles. I've seen her do good work, though, for sure. So I wasn't, like, dreading her in the lead or anything. But I think she did an amazing job in this movie and absolutely carried the movie, without a doubt. I was 100% buying all of her decisions. I felt she was charming and likable before she gets into the water. And when she's in the water, because she's all alone, alone and she essentially has nobody else to talk to and to just instead of just keeping her there sitting on a rock and just having her breathe go like <sighs> or do something stupid like that they actually not only had her character think things through logically and actually plan out her next moves which I thought was very smart for her as a character but they actually make her very likable when she's out on this rock. She's like talking to herself, pretending, like say she's trying to heal an injury or something that she has. She's pretending that she is in a, uh, a, a hospital or something, in a surgery room, and the sur she pre pretending she's a surgeon or something. And I really thought that that definitely added to her character. As far as her backstory in this movie goes, it's definitely explained a lot more than it needs to be. I think very early on in the movie, there was one image that pops up on the screen that immediately told me that, listen, her life hasn't been the greatest, this, you, this is very needed for her, and the fact that she gets screwed and a shark is um, stopping her from uh, her not only enjoying her vacation, but also potentially threatening her life, um, I definitely felt for her and felt for that. Now, I do feel they went too much into the backstory and they showed 
too much of her family, essentially, without actually cutting to them and scene, cutting to scenes with them, because we're with Blake Lively the whole time, which is good, but I, I'll get into that later in my problems. But Blake Lively, without a doubt, is one of the strengths of this movie. She's not only incredibly likable, but she's very intelligent and smart, and yes, she worked very well in this movie, and I give her a thumbs up. Good job. Um, I Again, as I said with... One of the definite pluses of this movie is Joan Colette Serra, the director. I think he did an excellent job directing this movie as well. I really like how he's broadening his films, in a sense. He did one in focusing on a young orphan girl, another in a plane, and now he's done another one on a beach, confined in a beach. And I really like where he's going. I like his shots. I, love, I liked his choices as a filmmaker to reveal certain things. Um... In regards to where the shark is, I love how they didn't just straight up rip off of Jaws every time the shark is around. Um, I love how sometimes the shark fin is maybe just in the background. We don't cut to the POV. Yes, of course, we cut to the POV of the shark several times in this movie. It's not like they overdo it, and it's not like they're biting off Jaws, because you have to give us a POV of a shark. Why not? It's creepy. It works. Um, but they didn't rely on that to show us the shark. They would just show a fin or something in the ocean, or maybe even a shadow at times, because I thought that even worked as well throughout the film. So, good job. Um, now, one of the, another one of the best things going with this movie, in my opinion, was the cinematography. I felt this movie it was really gorgeously shot, and it not only helped that they shot this movie on a beautiful, exotic, isolated island um, and beach area, but I felt it also really helped that they completely utilized gorgeous underwater shots. Because let's face it, we now have HD cameras and red cameras and all of these DSLRs that take gorgeous underwater cinematography. And I'm not trashing Jaws or anything like that. I love that movie. But it's a lot, it looks a lot more gorgeous in crystal clear HD on the big screen than anything that we've seen underwater-wise in Jaws. Just to throw that little comparison out there. I still like this movie more, though, because it's Spielberg. But the underwater shots are gorgeous. I love how they weren't just static shots, but we actually see a lot of the underwater, and we see Blake Lively go under the water for a lot of time. There is a interesting sequence where she is with the shark underwater and it was gorgeously shot and I just thought that really added to the beauty and the wonderful exotic feelings of the location and of the film in general I guess you could say um, if that makes any sense um, so yeah I definitely thought this was a beautiful movie to look at and watch in terms of uh, from a visual level, from shots, there's some gorgeous wides and bird's eye view shots that just aim straight down. And I really liked the, the choices and the sizes, and I thought that they were working overall really, really well. Um, so I thought all that worked incredibly well. I thought the script overall, it's not like it's anything like mind-blowing. It's a survival story. So obviously there's going to be some filler. There's going to be some moments where it feels a little slow. And I definitely felt that. I don't feel the movie is perfectly paced or anything like that. It does have a slow moment here or there. It is definitely hard to keep engagement so long with just one character out in the middle of an ocean. There's only so much you can have this character do. But I overall, for the most part, was entertained and thought that they added a few sequences that really worked and really added to this character's peril. And I loved how it was a struggle that didn't only last a couple of hours, it spans over a day or so. And I really liked that overall component of the film. My problems with the movie, because as I said, it's not perfect. It's fun and entertaining, and it's crazy to watch everything unfold and watch this character go through this crazy journey of trying to get out of this situation. But um, getting into problems, the only problems that I necessarily had... I was pretty much grounded in the reality of the movie. I totally bought everything that the shark was doing and attacking her. I never felt that I got thrown out of the logic of this movie. The one, There was one moment where I did get thrown out of the movie, and it's very quick. It's at the end. It's in the third act, in the last, like, ten minutes of the movie. And it, I'll just say this much. It involved fire on water. That's all I'm going to say. I don't understand how it happened. I don't really get it. It's not really a spoiler, but I just, that completely took me out of the movie. I'm still sitting here trying to figure out how that happened, that managed to happen in the movie. Um, other than that, I thought they also were a little heavy hitting 
Blake Lively's character's backstory in the movie. I there's there's this whole FaceTime conversation that she has before she goes in the water. By the way, I love like the digital representation of like photos and everything on the screen instead of cutting to a shot of her phone. I love when movies do that. But um there's a whole moment where she's having a FaceTime conversation and that kind of took me out of it cuz it was like they were trying to hit me over the head with, "Oh, look, this is her story. This is what happened in her past." But I already got her story with one picture that was on the screen, a picture of some character that's important to Blake Lively. And I totally would have just got the, her whole backstory with just them showing that picture. So I would have cut the FaceTime call out, and I would have cut the final scene of the movie out because I felt that with one of the last lines of the film and they cut to black, I felt that was the end, but then we got another scene, and I was like, yeah, okay, I, the scene's cool, but do we need it? No. Um, so yeah, other than a few slow pacing issues, I really enjoyed The Shallows. I had fun with it. I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's fun and entertaining. It's serviceable. It does what it set out to do to create a very thrilling scenario with a very interesting and exciting survival tale that I think actually kind of works. So with that said, I'm going to give The Shallows a solid grade of an 8.5 out of 10 or a B, definitely uh, better than Independence Day Resurgence and Free State of Jones. I will say that much for sure. Go see this over those movies for sure. Guys, those are my thoughts on The Shallows. Thank you so much for watching my review. And as always, let me know your thoughts on the movie down below. Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Did you absolutely hate it? Um, what are your thoughts on The Shallows? Let me know down below. And as I said, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching my videos. I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye, guys.